All right, so what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna take f of x from last time. Um, that was this crazy graph. Um, and we're gonna shift it. So I'm just gonna mark the zeros. We had zero, zero. We had five, zero. Um, we had asymptotes at two and negative two. And y equals one, yeah. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna reflect it about the x-axis. And we're gonna shift it two to the left. So let's do one at a time. Let's reflect it. So we're basically gonna make it go upside down. So to ref even asymptotes get reflected. So now it'll be at y equals negative one. Reflection doesn't change the um, other asymptotes. Um, and let's see, we're going to be down here to reflect. Does that make sense? Um, we'll be up here to reflect. The zero doesn't change with the reflection. It still goes through five, zero. Because we're reflecting about the x-axis. And then the right, the middle gets flipped. So that would be reflected. Oops, I totally switched the coloring. So that's my reflection. And then let's shift it two to the left. So I'm gonna erase the original and we're gonna shift two to the left just to make more space. So the y equals one, negative one doesn't flip change because that doesn't move left or right, but my asymptotes do move. So they were at two and negative two, but we're gonna go over two now. So two to the left would be negative four. And zero, because I'm moving these over two, over two. And then everything just moves over two. So the shape is the same, but two to the left. Um, I no longer go through zero, zero, that would go over two, so that would now be negative two, zero. Does that make sense? And that'll make that same shape in the middle. And then five, zero would move over two to three, zero, but we'd have the exact same shape. And that's it. So my asymptotes have all moved. My horizontal asymptote is now at y equals negative one. That was from the reflection. The vertical asymptotes got shifted two to the left, so now it's negative four and zero. And then my zeros also swapped, two, zero, and three, zero. So everything just moved. Oh, sorry, I dropped my pen. So just um, we can still practice shifting from chapter two. That was in two, two, if you want to go back to some shifting. Um, and let's do a graph from scratch. So this one's going to get a little messy. There's a lot going on. So three x, two x cubed. Um, two x cubed. Uh, minus six x squared. Minus eight x. So that's my numerator. And then all over x squared plus one. So let's find intercepts and asymptotes and then whatever else we may need. So intercepts, what happens when I plug in zero? I think I just get zero because the top would be zero. So my y-intercept is zero, zero. Um, my x-intercepts are when the numerator is zero because those are in the domain. Um, I can factor out a 2 and an x, and we get x squared minus 3x minus 4. Which, I don't think, does that factor? Yeah, it would be minus 4 and plus 1. Right, that'll multiply to make negative 4, add to negative 3. So we have a bunch. We have 0 four and negative one.
one, two, three, four, and then negative one. So we have three intercepts. And then let's do asymptotes. So are there any vertical asymptotes? Does the denominator ever equal zero? Nope, x squared plus one is never zero. So no vertical asymptotes. Horizontal asymptotes, we take leading terms. Um, which goes to 2x, um, which goes to infinity, right? When the top power is bigger, there is none. So none. So I think this is a case where we have a slant asymptote because it's exactly one degree higher. So let's do long division. Um, and we have to do long division. We can't do synthetic because it's not linear on the bottom. So we actually have to do long division here. So 2x cubed divided by 2x squared is 2x, we multiply. Oops, I'll line that up. The 2x will go with the 8x, so like terms are lined up. We'll subtract negative 6x squared minus 10x, and we'll divide again. So negative 6x squared divided by x squared would be minus 6 minus 6x squared. And then minus 6, subtract. It actually doesn't matter anymore. The remainder doesn't do anything. But we get minus 10x minus 6. But here's my slant asymptote. So this is our first time graphing a slant asymptote. So let's check this out. So we'll graph the line, um, use a different color or use dashed lines, something to make it um, stand out less. Um, so 2x minus 6. So 1, uh, sorry about that. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Um, I'll do it in a light color. So we'll start at negative 6, and then the slope was 2. So 2 over 1, up 2 over 1. 1, 2, 1, 1, 2, 1, 1, 2, 1. And I'll draw a dashed line. And we're almost there. This is, feels like enough to graph, almost, but we probably need to figure out what the heck's going on in these missing pieces. What I do know, though, is I know that the graph will approach this because it's going to be coming from this side. And I know that the graph will approach this. It's approaching this um, asymptote. So the last thing we like to know is at some point it has to cross this asymptote, right? Because it's... We have a couple points on the left side and a couple points on the right side. So at some point it has to cross. So we'll find that point and then we'll be done graphing. Um, we are allowed to cross slant asymptotes. Slant asymptotes only tell me end behavior. The only asymptotes we can't cross are vertical. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna set the function equal to the asymptote and see what happens. So the whole function was 2x cubed minus 6x squared minus 8x all over x squared plus 1. And then it equals, when do, when do they cross? So I'm going to zoom in to get rid of the long division, just get out of the way. And then sometimes this solves nicely, other times not. Let's just see what happens. So we'll go ahead um, and multiply. So go ahead and multiply out 2x minus 6 and x squared minus 1, x squared plus 1. Um, 
um, we get 2x cubed, we get minus 6x squared, we get plus 2x, and then we get minus 6. So this looks good actually, because some stuff goes away. Minus 2x cubed, minus 2x cubed. Cancel out. So we just have minus 8x equals 2x minus 6. So minus 2x minus 2x. So negative 10x is negative 6. So x is 6 tenths or 3 fifths or 0.5, whatever. 0.6, sorry. So that's when it crosses. Um, we could find the y value, but we don't really need the y value because we have the line already. So here's 1, so it would be about right there. So it would cross around right here. And this is enough to graph. We just have to um, guess a little bit. All of our zeros are multiplicity 0, so that means multiplicity 1, so that crosses, not touches, back from earlier chapters. So we know we approached the asymptote, so we're going to go up. We're going to cross. Right, we have to turn around at some point. I don't necessarily know when, so we'll guess. And we, then we go through this point. And then we have to turn to make the zero, and then we cross and just approach, approach the asymptote. So it feels really weird having so few points, but we had enough information. So make sure you draw the arrows for end behavior, and then the behavior at the zeros, and you can sketch these crazy graphs. Cool. So see you back for the next example. Let me know if you have questions.